On a remote Indonesian island, villagers whisper legends of tiny human-like creatures living deep in the forests. They say these beings walk upright, steal food at night, and speak in a strange, murmuring language. For generations, these stories were dismissed as folklore. But then, in 2003, scientists uncovered something that changed everything, a small-bodied human species no one knew existed. We now know them as Homo floresiensis, the smallest humans ever discovered. Although officially deemed extinct for the past 50,000 years, they sound extremely similar to the small human-like beings that the villagers reported seeing up until about 200 years ago. Some rumors even suggest that they could still be alive today. But how true are these claims? Stay till the end of the video to find out. Our story begins inside Liangbua, a cool shadowed limestone cave on the island of Flores. Archaeologists were excavating the cave expecting evidence of early modern humans. Stone tools, hearths, simple bones. What they found instead was a nearly complete skeleton of a small adult female. She stood just three foot six, weighed around 25 kilograms, and had a brain size of only 400 cubic centimeters, just a third the size of ours. And yet she was not a child. She was an adult human of a species that no scientist had ever seen before. They named her LB1, and with her, the world was introduced to Homo floresiensis. Soon, more bones were found. A jaw, teeth, arm bones, leg bones, all small, all distinct. It was clear. This wasn't a one-off mutation or medical condition. It was a population, a community, a lost branch of the human family tree. Homo floresiensis had proportions unlike any other recent human species. Their heads were tiny with a low forehead and no chin, but the overall shape of their skull still resembled ours more than an ape's. Their arms were long, their legs were short, and their feet were unusually big for their size, which may have given them a slow, shuffling gait. Their faces were broad with large teeth, but their noses were surprisingly modern-looking. In many ways, their bodies looked like something out of Africa from 1.8 million years ago, yet they lived until just 50,000 years ago. One of the biggest questions is, how did such a primitive species end up on an island in Southeast Asia? There are two major theories. Theory 1, descendants of Homo erectus. Homo erectus, the first humans to leave Africa, reached Indonesia over a million years ago. Many scientists believe their descendants arrived on Flores and, due to island dwarfism, became smaller over hundreds of thousands of years. Theory 2. A much older human lineage. Their body proportions resemble an even older species, perhaps Homo habilis or an early Australopithecine. If that's true, it means very ancient humans made it much farther across the globe than we thought. Either way, Homo floresiensis challenges our understanding of how humans evolved and spread across the world. Despite their small brains, Homo floresiensis were surprisingly intelligent. They crafted advanced stone tools, hunted animals much larger than themselves, and lived in organized groups. At that time, Flores was home to giant storks, giant rats, Komodo dragons and dwarf elephants, Stegodon. Evidence suggests they hunted Stegodon, an animal much larger than they were, using traps or coordinated group strategies. They also survived natural events like volcanic eruptions and shifting climates. The tools found in Liangbua include sharp flakes, scrapers, and cutting implements, similar to tools used by much larger-brained species. Now comes the part that made global headlines. The indigenous Nag people of Flores tell stories of the Ebu Gogo, tiny, hairy humanoids who lived in caves, stole crops, and mimicked human speech. The similarities to Homo floresiensis are uncanny around one meter tall, long arms, pot belly, murmuring voices, cave dwellers. Even more intriguing, these stories were not ancient myths. Some villagers claimed the Ibu Gogo persisted into the late 1800s. That means local memories of small-bodied humans existed before scientists discovered the fossils. Anthropologists believe these legends may be cultural memories passed down across thousands of years. There are three major reasons some people believe Homo floresiensis may have survived longer than science thinks. The first one is that the legend just sounds way too specific. They're not vague monsters. The description of the Ibu Gogo is just way too similar to Homo floresiensis. The second is that Flores is extremely remote. Even today, large portions of the island remain unexplored, with dense jungles, deep valleys, and cave systems stretching for kilometers. 
And the third reason is that extinction at 50,000 years ago is very recent. That's the same period modern humans reached the region. To some, that raises the question, did they survive contact? Could an isolated population persist somewhere remote? Of course, there's no physical evidence, but the idea captures the imagination because these beings were real human relatives, not folklore inventions. As compelling as the stories are, scientists agree. There is no confirmed evidence that Homo floresiensis survived past 50,000 years ago. No recent skeletons, no tools, no DNA traces. Their disappearance aligns with major environmental changes and the arrival of modern humans. Whether or not anyone survived into recent times, Homo floresiensis forces us to rethink human evolution. They show us that our world once held multiple kinds of humans, each with their own cultures, abilities, and mysteries. And on the island of Flores, the line between myth and memory is remarkably thin. The hobbit humans may be gone, but their story, and the possibility that someone once remembered them, still walks the forests today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for weekly early human videos.